premise is leveraging capabilities of location, which is predominant in most phones that are out there today, uh, through assisted GPS, GPS, or network-based location, or Wi-Fi to triangulate uh, around a person to determine their location. Geofencing is simply drawing a boundary around a particular location. So around a, you know, you might say, I want to draw a geofence around a very small boundary, say one city block in Manhattan. And against that boundary, I either want to trigger the delivery of a message or an advertisement or an offer uh, to a person that's within that geographic boundary. And again, because of what we're able to do with the location determination of a phone, uh, in particular, we can now deliver that message to that phone in that location. Geofencing is great for consumers because it allows you to get much more relevant offers and deals. Since we know where you are and we know what time of day it is and we may know some things about what merchants you like to shop at, we can give you, for example, a great 10% off coupon when you're around a retailer, maybe just in the parking lot um, that you can access right there and use without having to go home, realize that you could have saved some money and having to go back. There are 3.8 million square miles in the United States. That's a ton. What Geofence technology allows merchants to do is specifically target ads within a specific radius of their retail locations um, or other points of interest. Specifically, most merchants typically uh, match these, uh, these Geofence radiuses to their trade radius. So the ultimate result here is that uh, merchants are only serving ads to areas that matter the most to them. As a result of this technology, um, what we've seen across the board is that we've seen ad performance and also secondary purchase intent metrics typically increase about 30 to 40 percent um, compared to um, non-geofence targeted um, ad campaigns.